Well, I'm here with Jan McNeilan, and it's time for our tips of the month. And we're standing in front of a rhododendron that has a speckly look to it, which I don't think is natural, is it? It has an, it, it has an issue. <laughs> it does have an issue. This is a Vulcan rhododendron. It, it's a uh, red, and it's in pretty much full sun and does pretty well. But um, it's for years and years, it's had rhododendron lace buck, which looks much like, um, on, well, here's a better leaf that I actually cut off, much like wow. spider mite damage, it but it really isn't here. And if you turn the leaf over, look on the underneath side of the leaf, the um, eggs for this coming spring are laid along the midrib of the leaf, and then there'll be the nymphs that'll hatch, and then the adult. And the thing of it is, is the adult is a clear wing, and you can look straight at it. They don't move hardly at all, and you don't see them. Well, and two, I think l l don't, we don't want people to get this confused with lace wing. This no. is lace bug. So lace it's a whole wing is, is thing. A, a, a beneficial insect. No, this is called a lace bug. It's brown. A lace wing is a light lime green, yeah. and it's a good guy. Well, this is the one that gets to Indian plum, azaleas, rhododendrons, and makes it look much like spider mite damage. And it almost looks rusty on the bottom. Yeah, some folks will think it's rhododendron rust, but it's it's not. It's really so not at all. a fungicide isn't going to do anything. But this is just the the fecal debris from the insect and from last year. And you're just rubbing your thumb all over it, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do we do to, to solve this problem? This is March, but and usually you won't see these, in, the adults hatch until early May, but I'm thinking with the weather that we've had this year, you're going to start seeing the adults in April, yeah. probably this year. So start to look, and if you see, um, you can look along the midrib carefully and see if any nymphs are starting to hatch. And you can hit it from underneath because they're underneath the leaves with hard water spray. You can use a horticultural oil okay. uh, that is uh, diluted enough so that it's not going to clog your whole evergreen shrub here. But the, the water sprays continuously will really discourage them. Okay. And it'll grow out of it. Now, some years this plant hasn't had it at all. Yeah. It just grows out of it, and they're not there. So, and you know, once a leaf is damaged, it's like us, us human skin. Right. Th it's going to be damaged. You're going to see that damage on that leaf yeah. until yeah. it drops and off. There's and nothing you're going to do. And isn't it, this is not going to kill the plant. Number one, you could have it, and it's not going to kill this plant. Okay. It's just knowing what it is if you don't like it. Now you have a mahonia. We're going to talk about too. You I do. I'd like to go now? out and back and show you. All righty. Well, now, Jan, here we are in front of a really stunning Mahonia. It's, it looks a little different. What kind of this is well, this one? Well, this one, I believe, is uh, a Mahonia lamarifolia. Really beautiful. Now, why did you bring us to show us the this? The reason I did is that this, <laughs> the blossoms are starting to fade here, but I, we've got some pictures to show you that are from earlier. I took them on the 2nd of February, and it actually starts to bloom in January. Uh -huh. And our hummingbird feeder is right here next to it. And the hummingbirds that winter over here, which we kept fed, um, they prefer this really? in the winter. And it's really fun to see them feeding off this in January and February when not anything else or much else is in bloom. And I'm going to make the assumption that any of the mahonias that are blooming will be attracting the hummingbirds anyway. Right. This, this is, is just an earlier bloomer yeah. than any of the rest of them. So and, and it's quite it's, lovely. It, it is. We've only pruned it down once. It's a slow grower. It's a nice specimen. And uh, I just, I, I really like this plant. And you know, at this time of year, Jan, we're all itching to get out in the garden. We know we are, we feel it, we wanna get out, you know, start our seeds, get stuff in the ground. But you have a thermometer there and we're gonna try to show people that yeah. it's still pretty chilly in that ground. Well, <laughs> those days when you go, yay, it's gonna be 54 <laughs> today. And so you get out and you start raking and cleaning up and everything, but the soil temperatures are still cold. And we get, we say this every year, but it needs saying every year and that is, um, Get a soil thermometer, see what the temperatures really are. Don't plant your warm season crops before the soil warms up to like 55. And that's so hard and to do, but the is. reality is, they're if you plant, rot. well, they're rot or they're just going to sit there They're going to sit there and do nothing or yeah. rot, and then you're going to have to start over again. Yeah, and so, so you're not getting well, the jump on the right. season that you think but you are. But there are some cool season plants, potatoes uh -huh. and peas and some spinaches and kales and some things that you can plant sure. earlier during the colder season. So. And, and so all you do is just buy those stick them in the ground, leave them in for a yeah, while, and you'll get a pretty clear reading. Yeah, I just look at them once in a while, and this one is telling me that it is 40 degrees. Okay, that's cold. <laughs> and, um, and, and it actually has been 
fairly warm it lately. Has, yeah, that's last week. <laughs> so it's been, been less than that. So I would wait until it's about 50 before I started thinking I could put, put marigolds or yeah. 55 even in the in the ground. Yeah, so even if tomatoes. you're itching to get out in the garden, you might want to use a little precaution yeah. and just reel it in a bit and do some planning and some dreaming because this is the time of year when we all want to get out there. Janet, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your tips, and we'll see you next month again. All righty. Thank you.